Welcome back to Bedtime Stories with Eli. And the topic of today's bedtime story is, Does Intimacy on the First Date Doom the Future Relationship? One more time. Does Intimacy on the First Date Doom the Future Relationship? <laughs> you know, I've talked about this topic time and time again uh, throughout many various videos. And I'm just going to give you the simple answer at the beginning of this video. And if you want to turn away after that, hey, that's your choice, right? But here's the thing. Attraction is a must and not a choice. And both the man and the woman are going to know if there's a large rush or spark of sexual attraction within three seconds of laying eyes on each other. <laughs> so when that's a fact... That is a biological and natural fact between a man and a woman when they first meet. If that's the case, then why would intimacy on a first date with two people that have compatibility doom the future relationship? Now, does that mean a relationship is guaranteed to work? No. You know, yeah, you may be physically attracted to each other. Yeah, you may get along with each other. Yeah, you may date a few times after having intimacy the first night and may realize in the second or third or fourth dates that some other things are not in alignment. But that doesn't mean being intimate with someone on a first date necessarily is going to affect, you know, the, the possibility uh, of a future relationship. You know, it's all subjective to the situation. Every situation is different. But what I will say right off the bat is... If a man and a woman are on a first date, they're getting along mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, and they're making out and things are escalating and sex is about to happen, but, you know, let's say one side stops it from happening, um, especially more so if it's the woman, in most cases, the man will never give her a second chance. Now, sometimes I've been in a situation quite a few times where some of my exes wanted to sleep with me the first night in my car. But because I really liked them and I wanted to, you know, wait one more time to make it a more special occasion, um, that was totally understanding. And when, see, when you're the man and, you know, the woman wants you that first night, but you hold off, that's showing her, wow, this dude actually, he wants me but he wants me for more than sex and he wants to make it special. That means it's not just going to happen tonight in this car. It, it, you know, uh, it wouldn't just happen one time if we did in this car, which we're not. The next time when we get together and we do it, we're going to keep doing it over and over again. We're going to continue seeing each other, right? So, so in the situation of the man, um, you know, uh, preventing it from happening, it from happening on the first date when the woman wants it is different than... If it's about to happen and the man wants it and the woman apparently wanted it, but then she pulls away, then that's a different story there. But anyway, let's get to this Reddit topic here and uh, see what the original poster states. This is from the subreddit dating underscore advice. And the original poster states in the topic title, uh, if you have sex on the first date, is the future of the relationship doomed? Let's read this short uh um, you know, posting here and read some comments. Possibly, oh, sorry, probably a silly question asked a thousand times, but has it, has ever happened to you, I think you meant to say, has it ever happened to you that a first date with sex involved turned into a long-term relationship? Yeah, many times. Many times. It either happened on the first date or it could have happened on the first date and I prevented it from happening on the first date because I wanted to show the woman that I wanted it to go a second or third date. But let me tell you something. Those first dates where it didn't happen, there was a lot of touching and making out and touching of, of very private body parts on a man and woman's body that I will not describe any further out here on YouTube because, you know, we don't want to get in trouble, but you know what I'm saying, right? Okay. Uh, let's see here. I understand that obviously everything depends on the people involved. Sure. But I know there's still this conception and I wanted to hear your thoughts. Let me tell you something. Attraction again is a it, it, attraction again is a must and not a choice, which is what I'm trying to say. Attraction is a must and not a choice. 
right? If two people are attracted to each other, a man and a woman are attracted to each other, they're going to want each other immediately. The reason why there's typically some resistance more so on the woman's side is because of the past social stigma where if women sleep with too many guys or if they sleep with a guy too fast, they're considered um, the S word. I'm not going to say it here. It's very derogatory and it will get me demonetized. You know, they're considered the S word or or the, the W word. Um, you guys can figure out and gals can figure out what that is. And look, that's that's the furthest thing from the truth. Now, I'm not saying that some women are not, you know, um, you know, those derogatory words. Uh, but but, you know, some of them are and, and some men are, you know, um, players that sleep with a lot of people. Right. But most normal people. OK, um, that, you know, are that are that are not just sleeping with everyone they fear uh being labeled as someone that sleeps around so it can make them somewhat hesitant okay so the bottom line is this and i'll be honest with you um, every relationship i've had in my entire life sex either happened on the first date uh, or the second date but no later by the third date if it didn't happen by the third date, then it never happened. Then it never went past the third date. For the most part, there's always, and, and every and every woman that I've dated, even if sex didn't happen on the first date, there was always some heavy making out happening on the first date. And if it didn't happen on the second date, there was heavy making out on the second date. Then the third date, we planned something special, right? So there has to be some kind of, um, you know, deep passion happening on a first date in my opinion for two people to want to continue moving forward whether they have sex that first date or not so if even if you end up having sex on that first night okay it is not necessarily a bad thing it doesn't mean that you're not gonna have a relationship with that person now some people play games and they pretend to want a relationship just to have a bunch of one night stands because they know some women um, will not sleep with them unless they are convinced that, you know, the guy's looking for a relationship. Those guys are players. I can't stand those guys. Those guys are pickup artists. I can't stand those guys. Okay. But most decent guys, most decent guys that really want a relationship will be open to sleeping with you on the first night if it feels right. And if not, at least some heavy making out. And then, you know, the second date or third date, you plan something special and it's amazing. So those are my thoughts. Let's uh, go down and read a few comments here. Let's go down to the comment section. I got, mar I got married to that person. It, you click. I think you might say, if you click, you click. It may or may not work out long term. Yeah, I mean, you got to try. If you feel a connection with someone, you just go for it. You don't hold back. And that includes intimacy. Been together five years and just had our second kid. Congratulations. Because you took a chance and it panned out for you, right? Let's see. Let me scroll down a little bit here. I'm sorry for being an old jaded skeptic because I might be wrong, but I have a hard time swallowing that this many of you married the one night stand and are actually happy. Happy in this case, meaning monogamous. If this is true, I need details. Please share your wisdom. See, this is probably a woman writing that, right? That's been holding off from allowing herself to feel intimacy or some kind of romance on the first date with a guy. The bottom line is this, like I said again, attraction is a must and not a choice. And you're going to feel that within the first three seconds of laying eyes uh, on each other. When a man and a woman first lay eyes on each other, within three seconds, they're going to know if that physical and large rush or spark of sexual attraction is there or, or it isn't, right? And if it's there... And you hold back because you have structured beliefs or you're afraid the guy's going to use you for a one night stand or you want to take things real slow. Then in essence, what you're conveying to the guy, if you're a woman doing that, if you're conveying what you're, what you're conveying to the guy, which is what I'm trying to say, is that 
you know, you're just playing games and you're not interested or there's just something wrong with you emotionally, right? Because an emotionally healthy and happy woman in that situation, if she's feeling it, it's just going to let things go. And it's going to let things go and flow, right? And let me tell you, um, you know, you say you're skeptic about the people that have married their one night stands. It's not, it's not technically a one night stand if you keep dating each other after that. Maybe they hooked up on the first night. Maybe they really liked each other and they had sex because they, they were attracted to each other and they liked each other. And then they woke up the next morning together and spent the day together. And then they started spending the weekends together. And then they moved in together. That's the way things happen because people take chances. No chances, nothing happens. If you don't take any chances, nothing, ha nothing happens. Don't be guarded. I've got plenty of videos coming on this, uh, on, on women being guarded and, 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 and that type of stuff. Stick around on this channel. Subscribe, bang the bell, select the notifications. Lots of great stuff is coming. But anyway, let's continue here. You're confusing the definition of a one-night stand. Since the relationship continued, it was not a one-night stand. Right! Let me repeat that again to the jaded lady. You're confusing the definition of a one-night stand. Since the relationship continued, it was not a one-night stand. Could not have said any better myself. You see, women that talk like that, the old jaded skeptic types, I would pick up on them. Before I met this woman and I was on, I was on the dating scene, I would pick up on these jaded type of women within five minutes of a phone conversation and boom, I'd hang up on them and ghost them. I don't like ghosting people, but sometimes you got to do that because, because even if you try to explain to someone that's jaded why you don't want to talk with them anymore, they would get triggered and they would waste too much energy where you can focus in on someone else that's more ready. All right. Let's read a few more here. Fair enough point. I suppose, but the point remains. Every time I have seen two people go home together in 30 years of life and 10 years of bouncing, I always see those same two people come back to the bar to try again with someone else. Well, sometimes things work and sometimes things don't. When it doesn't work, you put yourself back out there. What's wrong with that? I admire people that keep trying. But see, uh, this is probably a lady, right? The jaded one. I think it's the same one, the jaded one. Um... You know, if, if you're closed off to giving people a chance, you're never going to get anywhere, right? The more you stay in this jaded state of mind, the more it's going to hinder your success. And all you can do is project your insecurities like you're doing here. Let's see here. So as I said in an earlier post, the fact that so many people on here had a buddy call, I think you meant to say booty call, B U T T. Is that how you spell booty call? Booty is B O O T I E, I believe. She spelled booty call B U T T Y, butty call. <laughs> Buddy call. <laughs> that went on to more, which, the, which seems statistically improbable given the general dysfunction of your average person. If the contrary evidence wasn't, ma'am, you're speaking like a introverted, nerdy type of woman that has no social skills and is jaded as hell. Wow. Now let's read that again uh, in her tone of voice. The fact that so many people on here had a booty call that went on to more what seems statistically improbable given the general dysfunction of your average person. Ma'am, if you... God, man, this is annoying, ma'am. Gosh, ma'am, ma'am, you need to loosen up a little bit. You take the stick out of your, out of your, you know what, ma'am, ma'am. Some, you, someone shoved the stick up there, ma'am. It's not good. According to what I always hear about the divorce rate in this country, half these people should be divorced. R N. What's divorced R N? Right now is that? Well, the reason why the divorce rate is sixty percent in the U.S. and pretty much everywhere in the world is because um, a lot of women waited to get married until their 30s or late 30s and they end up settling for a beta male because when they tried to lock the Chads and Tyrones down in their younger days, they kept being used as a buddy call, like you say, ma'am. Not booty call. You, you say buddy call, B-U-T-T-Y, right? And so these women settle for guys they're not attracted to because the guys that they were attracted to didn't want to commit. And when they settled with these guys, okay, um, you know, these guys provided for them. They had kids with them, but these women really weren't sexually attracted to them and they weren't their type. 
but no other man would marry them before their biological clock would expire, so they settled. And now they have their kids and all that, and they're not, they're, you know, they say they're not feeling it anymore, but they never felt it in the first place. That's why they're getting divorced. Because a lot of these women didn't properly vet, um, you know, or qualify their partners. And these other guys are just beta males that don't know what they're doing in the first place, right? That's what's happening. That's why the divorce rate's so high. So I'm just a little bitch slapped out of my own knowledge based at this moment. Ma'am, at least that's the most honest thing you've said so far. Thank you for saying that. I'm trying to figure out how all these people wound up happy. Well, some of them wind up happy, some of them don't. The bottom line is everyone has to take a chance to ever accomplish happiness. If you want to achieve any happiness in your life, you have to take a chance. And, 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 and most chances are going to be failures. But every now and then, one of those chances will lead you to something very successful. So that's what happened, man. Or that's what's happening. There's your answer. Let's read one more here before we wrap this baby up. I realize I'm speaking a little bit out of my ass here. The same lady commented below. Since most of this is just hearsay. But I was raised by a generation of skeptics and prudes. Well, ma'am, it sounds like you have a structured belief system. And any decent, normal alpha male guy that understands the modern day woman, I'm not talking about the beta males. The, I'm talking about any decent alpha male guy that you'd be attracted to and want to be with is not going to put up with somebody that has structured beliefs. So, ma'am, you're going to have to get the stick out of your culo and then maybe things will turn around for you. Also, married to that person, says another another commenter. Been together 16 years and about to have a baby. Congratulations. So the one night stand, which was not a one night stand, sleeping together on the first night, turned into a 16 year relationship and you're about to have a baby. Congratulations. You took a chance. Another one says, also married the person. Right. So it can happen. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't. And I'm going to wrap up by saying this. The chance you don't take could have been the chance that may have found you the love of your life. And that's going to wrap this video here today. I want to thank you all for taking the time to view this video. Another video is coming to this channel soon. Please like, share, subscribe, bang the bell, select the notifications. Have yourselves a great night's sleep, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. We are out.